السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him for giving us the opportunities that he has given us for forgiving our shortcomings for being so merciful and kind for opening doors that we haven't even sought the opening of and for closing doors of harm and danger that we've never even imagined and we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household his companions all of them and we ask Allah to bless every one of us and our offspring to come up to the end my brothers and sisters this was not meant to be the way it turned out to be but we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it my friend Sheikh Shaheen Rahman invited me some time back to come to his place Allah blessed him with a little baby girl may Allah grant all of us goodness in our children and those who don't have children may Allah bless you with children say Ameen, Ameen. even if you're not married you still have to say Ameen, Ameen. <laughs> the reason is if you're not married and you say Ameen to children it means Allah needs to first give you a spouse so it's an all-inclusive dua <laughs> If you say, oh Allah, grant me the ability to buy a home one day, it means you're going to get a job, inshallah, or you're going to get money somehow. So it's an all-inclusive dua. So when he invited me, it was myself passing this part of the country and telling him, just yesterday, I told him, inshallah, I'll be there this afternoon after Salat al-Jum'ah. The next thing I knew is I was fed with some amazing Bengali food <laughs> I didn't know that once you eat it your eyes close <laughs> and when I opened my eyes I was ready to go to the masjid for Salat al-Maghrib subhanallah <laughs> and when I come here alhamdulillah I see all of you brothers and sisters walillahi alhamdulillah minna may Allah bless you I really don't mind about what happened with the sound and all that because it's not it's not a, a, an everyday type of a gathering but I see brothers and sisters, and when I came to this uh, masjid here, please be careful here, where it's, the sound will turn off and it will be your fault. Uh, the wire that is going down needs to be kept like a little egg, because the minute we stamp on, trample on it and pull it, nobody's going to hear anything. So, this masjid and many such masajid are signs of the concern of our forefathers who came here to preserve the deen. Do you realize that? One might say, why does it say Bengali Masjid, Turkish Masjid, Indian Masjid, Somali Masjid, and so on? I don't think the reason is actually in order to split people on lines of ethnicity or nationality but rather it was just that that community at the time happened to be in that space and they decided let's take care of the children so that's why they called it that nowadays the masajid that were built and established later none of them use those terminologies do you get my point so it is a positive thing it's not a negative thing it goes to show our history not what has happened today so no one should say, oh, this masjid is not mine, it's not ours. Wallahi, it belongs to the ummah. And even those who are here know that. But there will be predominantly perhaps one root of people or one ethnicity, predominantly, not only, perhaps because they were around this area at one stage. And at one stage, they were greater in number, perhaps. But inshallah, as time passes, you will see all of that fizzle out because the ummah is one. And that's why I am here today as non-Bengali as I am, I still enjoyed the food so much that I've discovered a whole new cuisine this afternoon. May Allah bless us all. I was wondering if there will be Bengali food in Jannah. <laughs> but then I realized that we just have to get to Jannah. Don't worry about what is in Jannah. One of the biggest mistakes we make 
is worrying about what we're going to get in Jannah and we're not worried about getting to Jannah. It's amazing. I have so many people asking me so many things about will we get this in Jannah? Will we get that in Jannah? And so on. And they, they, they don't even know if they're going to go to Jannah. That's the whole thing. So let's not lose focus. My brothers, my sisters, Wallahi, I'm delighted to be in your midst. I want to start off with two things. Number one, don't get too excited about who this guy is sitting in front of you. I am your regular, ordinary person of the ummah, just like you are. I have witnessed as I grew up people overdoing it with mashayikh. And some of the mashayikh allow it to happen. And they're guilty of it. They're human as well. They're guilty of making people believe that they are supernatural human beings. They're not. They're just human beings like everyone else. We respect them. We we honor them, we give them that respect, we learn from them, we will not disrespect them, but we don't worship them. And we don't need to treat them as though, you know, they are some supernatural or some may even take it as far as saying they cannot falter, they cannot make mistakes. Your connection is with Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you don't connect yourself to Allah, the day that Shaykh makes a mistake, that happens to be exposed, you might lose your keenness on the deen because your deen was connected to the wrong individual. That's why. So I'm here to tell you, don't connect yourself to me. No, connect yourself to Allah. I'm glad Allah gave us the opportunity, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to gather today in His own house. I came for Salatul Maghrib. I have commitments just now somewhere else. But Alhamdulillah, I, I don't mind sharing a good word because it's... A sunnah, and if the brothers and sisters are keen, I can forget about Milton Keen and I can come where they are keen somewhere else. <laughs> you know, you have to have a sense of humor because today we've got too many problems on earth. Too much is happening. There's no, no harm in having a clean sense of humor, bi'idhnillah. Is there? Any harm? And the young ones, they were expecting that anyway. So, my brothers and sisters, that's the reality of today. You are here because of the love of Allah and His deen, because perhaps maybe Allah may have used us to help each other. I gain by you benefiting from what Allah has allowed me, perhaps maybe to a small degree, to say in a way that got to you. And I know it wasn't in this masjid because I've never been here. And this is why I say technology has to be used in a way that... Technology has to be used in a way that we reach the people who don't come to the masjid. That's what it is. If you're not going to come here, hang on, we're going to get to you. How? Allah will make it happen by the will of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, as much as this technology wasn't there at the time, but his effort and his prophethood and risala, the message, it got everywhere. Why? He used whatever was the latest at the time to get the message to the Romans, to the Byzantians, to the Persians, to the rest of the Arabs, and to Africa as well. He used whatever it was. What was it? They never used to read and write at the time mostly. But he got someone to write. In fact, it went further than that. When it came to the Romans, they said to him, they won't read your letter because it's not sealed. It doesn't have the stamp. He said, let's get a stamp and make it. That wasn't the method of Islam. That was the method, the method of the Romans. But to get the message across, he said, no problem. If it's something that's, you know, there is nothing evil in it, we, we will do it for the message to get across. That's the reason why today we use technology. Right now I'm speaking to you and we have a few thousand people right here in front of me watching this live. So even if those who couldn't make it here, if Allah wants them to hear the word, they will hear it and they might hear it later on. It's all part of Allah's plan. Don't underestimate the way Allah reaches you. But I have something else to say. When you hear a message, you will be definitely asked about what you did with that message. You heard something, what did you do? Did you change your life a little bit? Did you become a better person? Allah make it easy. I think someone's car is blocking the rest of the cars. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Yeah. Can I have the number plate, inshallah? <laughs> Say it again. KP. 
Zero eight? X. 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 P. Y. X. P. Y. Okay, you heard that, guys? The value of that car has just added, increased by about 20,000 pounds. <laughs> because we've mentioned it live, mashallah. I hope it wasn't done purposely. My brother, my sister, if that is your car, please get up. May Allah bless you, grant you good health, open your doors. If you get up, may Allah open every door of goodness for you. It's okay, you made a small mistake, don't worry. You blocked someone, may Allah not block you. You can still get up and you can still go and Allah bless you and your offspring and grant you barakah and grant you so much of wealth that you can build the whole extension of this masjid all on your own. Amen. What about those whose cars were parked straight? Don't you want a dua? The rest of us who parked our cars straight, may Allah give us double that. Yeah, he says that's reasonable. I tell you why. Mistakes are okay. You see, I noticed the hustle at the back and there was a paper doing its rounds and I picked up that there is something to do with a vehicle that's blocking someone somewhere. No need to get upset. No need to get angry. We all make mistakes, don't we? And in our excitement, we parked and we parked the wrong way. So when we correct someone, we should do it with love. Make them feel like getting up. If someone got up right now in our midst, and it was their car, I would have kissed their forehead. I promise you. Why? The courage you need to admit that you were the one is more valuable than anything else you could have done tonight. Subhanallah. Do you get my point? I mean, if someone says, who did this? And you, you, you just get up and walk out. Subhanallah. It, that's a lot of courage, right? So why should we curse? Why should we say, come on guys, we've been telling you and so on. No. You know what you did is wrong. And then what about those who didn't do anything wrong? Well, just give them double of that, inshallah. They also need to be encouraged. We all need to be encouraged. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah create people around us who can encourage us in a positive way and not in a negative way. Everyone wants goodness. Everyone wants guidance. But they all want it in a nice way. They want you to tell them in a good way. Sometimes you need a little bit of a tapping. Sometimes you need a little bit of a tapping. Notice I didn't say slapping. I said tapping. Tapping meaning a tap on the shoulder to say, hey, 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 you know what? It's getting a bit much now. It's the third time your car's been parked this way. You know? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, we get together and we definitely would like some form of good motivation. We would like good motivation. If you have gotten together for the sake of Allah, in person, with people, you need to understand the blessings you will achieve are tremendous. It's not easy to sit the way you are seated. It's not easy to stand the way the, the brothers and perhaps some of the sisters might be standing. Not easy. But we're all together for one cause. I'm sure Allah has blessed us. To come to the house of Allah, come what may. And inshallah, Tonight, we'll donate so much to this masjid that their extension that they're planning outside there will be made easy. I mean, such that the next time we come here, we'll have space still at the back. <laughs> MashaAllah, tabarakallah. I see the brothers standing and nodding. That will cost you 20 pounds, bro. <laughs> May Allah bless you. May Allah bless all of you. Wallahi, I really feel that uh, we are blessed. We are definitely blessed. Tonight, if we haven't changed our lives in a small way, we've wasted our time. Wallahi. What are you going to do tonight? You came all the way here for what? For the sake of Allah. To do what? Listen to something that will maybe move me a little bit. Are you moved? If you're not moved, and if you don't move, you've wasted your time. You need to get closer to Allah because you are getting closer to your grave and your death anyway. You know that? Every breath that you take, is one less breath from the quota of breaths that Allah sent you with to earth. If Allah told you you're going to have 36 billion breaths, every breath you take is one less, right? One closer. I don't know when I'm going to go. You don't know when you're going to go. What keeps us going? Hope in the mercy of Allah keeps us going. Until the day you die, have hope in the mercy of Allah. I'm going to Jannah. I'm not an evil person. Yes, I've committed sin, not because I want to defy Allah, but because of my human weakness. There's a very big difference between the two. 
Which believer will commit a sin in defiance of Allah? No, a true believer will never do that. True believers only commit sins out of their human weakness, not out of defiance. If Allah says this is prohibited, show me a believer who says, okay, you said this is prohibited, I'm going to do it to show, to show you, you can't do anything to me even if I do this. Does anyone say that? A'udhu Billah, they don't. But believers will commit a sin and come back to Allah. That's why the hadith says, Kullu bani adama khatta wa khayrul khatta'in tawabun All human beings make lots of mistakes. Khatta means one who makes many, many mistakes. They commit many, many sins, not just one. And the best of those who commit a lot of sins are those who engage in repentance often. A lot of repentance. Ask yourself, do I engage in a lot of repentance? Do I? You know what the answer is? No. That's why we're here today to say, let's engage in repentance every day. Every day. In the morning when you get up, start off with repentance. At night before you recline, repent. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, when he used to recline, there are several dua that he used to make, supplications. And one of them was, Bismika Allahumma wa da'atu jambi wa bika arfa'uha in amsakta nafsi faghfir laha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bihifdika alladhi tahfadhu bihi ibadaka salihin. In your name, O Allah, I'm putting my side to recline. I'm lying down. Basically, I'm going to sleep. In your name, O Allah, I'm going to sleep. And I will get up in the morning with you the same name, with your name, O Allah. If you, if you take my soul away in my sleep, forgive it. Grant me forgiveness. And if you send me back in the morning to witness another day, protect me in the same way you protect your pious slaves, those whom you love. Wow. That was the dua of the Prophet ﷺ. Do we make that dua? Do we say, oh Allah, I'm lying down, forgive me if you're going to take me at night. We just hit the sack. And you know what? We've got WhatsApp on, on, with us and we fall off to sleep with that on our chest. The last thing we said was whatever. Sometimes, astaghfirullah, can I, can I press a red button? Can I? Sometimes, a'udhu billah, pornography is on and we end up sleeping just like that and we don't know it's on and we might even die in that condition. May Allah forgive us. May Allah never let that happen. It does not help you use technology wisely. If you've made mistakes, be strong. Today is the day you're going to say, enough of that, I'm throwing it out for the sake of Allah. So the day that I die, Allah knows that I gave it up only for Him. You know when someone forwards you a dirty message, everyone gets excited. They know five or ten of their friends who will appreciate those dirty messages. So they'll send them to a selected few. They won't send them to the sheikh down the street. Why? They know he won't appreciate it. You'll be surprised. May Allah forgive us. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it's like the astaghfirullah. Can I tell you? They say there was this guy who visited one of the countries where people move around semi-nude, right? So he, the first time he saw it, and he, astaghfirullah, and the driver who was designated to him he was wondering, what's this astaghfirullah, you know? What's this astaghfirullah? Meaning, what are you saying astaghfirullah? He says, hey, nudity, you know? So, he got there the next day, he says, the same thing happened. They passed someone, he looked down, astaghfirullah. He, he passed someone else, looked down, he says, astaghfirullah. Sheikh, just watch this, please be careful. The next day, astaghfirullah. And so... The brother, he, he <coughs> knew that now if there's something that I'm not supposed to be looking at, then I've got to say astaghfirullah loudly and I've got to look down. And the third day or the fourth day, this uh, brother, you know, pious brother, mashallah, he was, you know, like falling off to sleep. And the driver must have noticed something. He says, astaghfirullah. He got up, he says, where, where, where? <laughs> That's why I said, you never know. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. Truly, shaitan comes and try and trap. And I'm not saying it in order to, you know, uh, to do down anyone, but I'm just showing you how shaitan comes to everyone. If shaitan comes to a layman, trust me, he also goes to the sheikh. Believe me. And if you think shaitan doesn't go to someone, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ, an exception in the sense that he was a Nabi of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is something else. I'm talking about people here now. Today's world, subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters... That change needs to come, get closer to Allah. Tonight's the night where we have to say that, you know what? I'm going to get up for Salatul Fajr. If you have achieved one thing tonight, Saddiqni, believe me, 
we were successful here tonight. But if you go home and nothing changed, why did we bother meeting? Why did we bother getting to me? I say it's not important to shake my hand. That selfie will never ever help you in your grave, let alone take you to Jannah. Never. There is no value of it whatsoever. Nothing. And if you were to shake the hands of all the people on earth, it's not going to help you. If you think that just by merely shaking a hand is going to take you to Jannah, you are so, so delusional. You are so wrong. Instead of shaking the hand, be shaken by the message. I always say this. I see people getting excited. I get worried. As much as the excitement is a good thing, if only it's for the right reasons. We love each other for Allah, no doubt. I get so happy when I see my brothers, my sisters, an opportunity to interact in a good way, to say a good word, to make them feel a little bit better because we are struggling. You know, the environment out there is not easy anymore. It's becoming more and more difficult. So it's lovely to see brothers and sisters, mashallah, especially those trying. You know, they try. And trials are on all different levels. When you see someone, mashallah, tabarakallah, outwardly, they look so good. You know they have struggles you don't know. When you see people outwardly, they may not look so practicing. They also have struggles. Who knows who's going to win the race? And I want to tell you one thing tonight. Jannah is broader than your imagination. Jannah is so broad. Allah says, وَجَنَّةٍ عَرُضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ Allahu Akbar. When Allah speaks about what He's delivered those, or He's going to deliver those who have a relationship with Him. Do you have a relationship with Allah? Do you have a connection with Allah? Well, if you have a connection with Allah, may Allah bless you and keep strengthening that connection because then Allah has promised you Jannah. And Allah says that Jannah is wide, so wide, the earth and the skies all together wide. That's a description telling you your imagination cannot comprehend the broadness of Jannah. So stop kicking people out of Jannah as though it belongs to you. You know why? Today we have a disease in the Ummah. What's the disease? We concentrate on talking about specifics and we declare this person is going to go to Jahannam. This person, you're not going to Jannah. This one is not going to Jannah. That one's not going to Jannah. Who gave you the right to say that? So who is in Jannah? You said they're in, not in Jannah. They said you're not in Jannah. The others said both of you are not in Jannah. And all three of you said another fourth one is not in Jannah. Jannah's going to be empty. <laughs> Jannah's going to be empty. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is greater than you and I can ever imagine. Allah says, my mercy has encompassed absolutely everything. Do you know that the mercy we find on earth and the mercy you find between mothers and children and parents and so on and whatever else you see, whether it be human beings or animals or whatever it may be, it's only a small portion of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, minute. <coughs> Through Allah's mercy, He gives the believers and the non-believers. On earth, what do you see? You see the non-believers sometimes have a greater, happier, more, more luxurious life. That's why we say luxury and materialism is not necessarily a sign of the happiness of Allah. And when Allah has taken away from you, it's not a sign. It's not necessarily a sign that he is upset with you. If Allah has tested you, it's a sign that he loves you. If you are content with the test. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. What problems do you have in your life? He had bigger problems. What did he look at them as? He looked at them as the mercy of Allah. He said, Oh Allah, if you are happy with me, I don't care. Anything else can happen. It's okay. It's fine. That was his aim. Happiness of Allah. Oh Allah, you are pleased with me? The rest of it is okay. He lost his mother. He lost his father. He lost his grandfather. He lost his family members. He lost his wife. 
He lost all his children during his lifetime. The boys in their infancy and childhood. The girls while they were adults besides one of them. Fatima radiallahu anha lived a little bit after the Prophet sallallahu he lost Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiallahu anha. He lost so he lo this is only loss of life around him of the family members. Such that subhanallah, you know what? If it had happened to any one of us, we would think someone's doing black magic on our family. <laughs> yes. We would go and lose our iman trying to gain happiness. People want to gain happiness, so they go to someone who does magic and they have no shame. On one hand, they are saying, La ilaha illallah. And on the other hand, they want to engage in magic. Whoever goes to a fortune teller or a soothsayer and believes them has disbelieved in what Muhammad brought. How's that? Hadith. The Prophet says, and another one, whoever does the magic has associated partners with Allah. Man sahara faqad ashrak. Over. Game over. Why do that? For what? Why lose your iman? For what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. The Prophet ﷺ, they boycotted him and his companions for a few years. What did they do? It strengthened their iman. My brothers and sisters, I have good news for you. What is it? Good days are to come by the will of Allah. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. In Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is all able, all capable. Good days are to come. Even if we don't see them in our lifetime, but they will come. Subhanallah. Good days are coming. They will come. Be patient. Don't lose focus. Don't lose your relationship with Allah. Continue persevering. You will see the doors opening one after the other. This afternoon I spoke in Milton Keynes. Let me tell you. By the way, the brothers and sisters were listening very keenly. Mashallah. But I can tell you something. I did say, all of us today have so many things we didn't even ask Allah for. What do you have? A lot. Did you ask Allah for these things? No. I didn't. You're looking at me now focused with greater focus than any video apparatus can give you. But you're using your own eyes. Did you ever say, Oh Allah, please give me good eyes. You already have the good eyes. Did you say, Oh Allah, I thank you for allowing me to just be able to see. Did you ever say that? Many of us have never said that in our lives. Oh Allah, thank you for giving me ears. You know, subhanallah, that I can hear by. Did we ever say that? Oh Allah, thank you for giving me legs, I can walk. But the day it starts going, then you realize, Oh Allah, I can't see anymore. Allah says, but you saw for 50 years, can't we take it away for 5 years, 10 years? No, you can't. But you never ever thanked us. You never. What was the gratitude? How do you show gratitude to Allah? Allah gave you so much. Today you have clothing, people don't have clothing. Today you have housing, food, whatever else, even if it's little, even if it's a different quality. But Allah gave it to you. Did you thank Allah for it? Allah says, all you need to do, stay away from prohibitions. Wherever you fall, come back to me quickly. I'll forgive you. Wherever you fall, come back to me quickly. I will forgive you. And engage in that which I asked you to engage in. Do that which you have to do. That's the thankfulness of Allah. Gratitude towards Allah. I must be grateful to Allah. When we're deceiving, stealing, pinching, committing sin, intoxicants, whatever else it may be, gambling, you know the abominations. You know them better than I do. If we're engaging in that, it's ingratitude. It's called ungratefulness. You're not grateful to Allah. So let's show gratitude to Allah. Tomorrow morning, Salatul Fajr, we must fulfill it at least. Fulfill it. Put your clock, get up. Wallahi, I tell you, your life will change. Your life will change. Don't you want your life to change? Don't you want goodness, happiness, success? What you have today, you did not have 20 years ago, but still you're complaining. And I've said this a lot. All of us, either you or your parents or grandparents, check their lives out. Go and study where they were 20, 30, 50 years ago. And ask yourself today, where am I? Wallahi, you are in a better position materially. Wallahi. Most of the cases, that's what it is. But we're still complaining. We're complaining about what? I don't have enough. I don't have what the other guy has. 
Allah didn't say he's going to give you what the other guy has. Allah says he's going to give you what he knows is best for you. You and your level. Sometimes when Allah gives you too much, you forget Allah. He knows what to give you. So be happy. Show gratitude to Allah. Get closer to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you get closer to Allah, one of the signs of closeness to Allah is your, you become softened with other human beings. That's a sign of the mercy of Allah. If you want to know that Allah has mercy on you, your heart is softened when it comes to others. The way you talk to them is very respectful. The way you help them is selfless. The way you reach out to them shows concern for them in a beautiful way. That is a sign of the mercy of Allah. It shows you are close to Allah. Did you hear what I said? If you think you are pious and you have an attitude that has no gratitude, Remember, you are not pious. If you think you are pious and the way you speak to your family members is rough and very, very harsh and hard, that is a sign that your piety is fake. It's fake. You can make six salah a day. Your piety is fake. Why? Because true piety shows in your character, in your conduct, in the way you deal with people, in the way you speak to people, starting with your spouse your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters, that is true piety. Then your family members, how do, do you make your spouse happy, really happy by telling them things just to make them happy? Do you? If you do, perhaps you have a sense of connection with Allah. Especially when it is difficult, when it is hard. I was saying again this afternoon in Jumu'ah, and I'm saying it again because we need to keep repeating it. Serving your parents is not going to be easy. How do I know it's not going to be easy? Because Allah says, by doing that, you will get Jannah. If Allah tells you by doing something, you will get Jannah, it's not easy, it's tough. That's why He says you're going to get Jannah. It's very tough. When, when you get married and you have kids and your mother is now old and there's politics between your mom and your wife and so many other things happening and so on, and then you've got to juggle between the two and you've got to play the politics and become a huge politician in the house because you know how to please all the people by telling them things you don't really mean and so on. All of that is a battle and a struggle. It's an uphill struggle throughout your life. At the end of it, perhaps if you were genuine, Allah will give you Jannah because He knows you tried to maintain the peace. It's not a joke. If it was so easy, do you really think Allah would tell us, serve your mother, you get Jannah? <laughs> no, it's, it's hard. Allah in silat Allahi ghaliya. Jannah, the commodity of Allah, is expensive. It's not cheap. You're going to have to read Fajr not just one day, every day. Then you get Jannah. Do you get the point? You're going to have to dedicate every day. There is no cheat day as though you're on a little spiritual diet. No. You know, when you want to lose weight, they tell you six days, no food. Seventh day, cheat day. No problem. Eat what you want. Subhanallah. This is not like that. This is not like that. This is actually a lifetime dedication. Are you ready? Lifetime dedication to Allah. I want to be clean. I want to be sober. I'm going to cut my bad habits starting with smoking. I'm going to cut my... Don't look at me that way. Subhanallah. I did say what I just did say. Mashallah. I'm going to cut my bad habits. The amount of time I spend on the, on the phone, I'm going to cut it down for the, in order to spend time with my wife. Or let me word it differently. In order to spend time with my husband. Mashallah. I had to say both because it's a two-way problem. It's not just a one-way problem. <laughs> yes, I need to cut time. Why are we seated here today? Because it has a greater impact than watching it, but watching it is not bad because I tell you, if that is the only option I have, it's okay, I can use the technology. But some people won't come down the road just because they say, don't worry, I'll watch it live. In that case, we will tell you, if it's just down the road, you lost out on the blessings. Perhaps the mercy of Allah and it is descending. <laughs> you know, there's a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ speaks about never do people gather in the house of Allah in order to try and remember Allah, to please Allah, to remind each other of Allah, except that the mercy descends from the heavens. The malaika make dua for them, the, the angels, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them with such mention that is so blessed. 
Personally, you and I are seated here today in the house of Allah, solely for the sake of Allah. I promise you, the angels have encircled us. If you were just sitting and watching from down the road, you're not one of those. Yes, you will achieve a mercy, but not the blessing we have. We have it a little bit higher than you. May Allah bless us all. And we need blessings. I'm looking for solutions to the difficulties I have. Don't look at me and think, this guy's got it all. You know, I, I, I read a comment there saying, Mufti Manx living the life, man. <laughs> you know, from airport to airport. If only you knew the struggles we go through, you wouldn't even want to be in my shoes. By the way, the size of my shoes is very awkward. You're not going to fit in. <laughs> May Allah bless you guys Amen. and all of us. Amen. Amen. So it's very difficult. If you think I don't have problems, then you're lost. We all have issues. You know, they say, don't be jealous of what Allah's given someone because you don't know what Allah took away from them. Remember that. Allah's taken away from everyone something and He's given everyone something. If Allah took away from you, He gave you something else. But you know what? Your mind and your heart is too weak to look at what He gave you and to look appreciate the fact that what He took away from you, something you can manage. You can manage. Some of us here, if we look at the houses of others who are here and we say, wow, look at this house. If you were to go and live in that house in a short time, you might think, I wish I can go back to my little hut. It was a more peaceful life there. Maybe. I'm just giving you an example. Because you don't know what Allah gave you. He might give you a house where your toast to only toast two at a time. No problem. That's how we have. The other guy's got eight at a time, but he only puts one piece of bread. Yes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We don't know. Put things into perspective, understand them. This is the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Allah has blessed you in ways that you don't even know. You have to sit and think. That is why Allah says this tadabbur, tafakkur, to be able to sit and think and ponder over the gifts of Allah is an ibadah on its own. It is an ibadah on its own. What did Allah give you? Sit and think. Allah gave me this, He gave me that. If Allah gave you one thing, He didn't give you another, He gave... That's life. That's what life is all about. Don't be despondent. Build your relation with Allah. Every day must be a better day. Don't be upset. Allah will test you. I was saying the Prophet Muhammad they, they boycotted them for some years. It strengthened them. The good news I was giving you as follows. Bilal ibn Rabah radiyallahu anhu, one of the first to accept Islam, in the first batch to accept Islam, he was punished and penalized. He was dragged in the sand. He was whipped. He was made to bleed. He was dragged in the heat of the desert, all because they wanted him to stop saying that your Lord, my Lord is one. That's all. And he kept on saying, he is one, he is one, he is one, he is one, and he's one, and he is one. And as they whipped him more, he said it again, he's one. And as they threw st stones on him again, and they put rocks on him, he kept on saying, he is one. Allah. Ahadun, 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 ahad, ahad. He suffered persecution. Why did Allah want that to happen? Why? People say, if Allah is really so merciful, why? Why is this happening, that happening? From the very beginning, Allah says, you recognize the Almighty, you may, you may have some persecution as a result. Today we have Islamophobia. Deal with it positively, not negatively. Just quietly be yourself in a confident way. Don't lose your faith. Let me tell you, those of us who lose our faith due to what might be happening around us need to go back to Bilal ibn Rabah al-Habashi. Let me tell you something. Tonight, tonight, I become emotional when I talk about this. Bilal ibn Rabah al-Habashi, he was known as a slave. They used to give him hard work. He was from Africa. He was strong. He could do things others couldn't do. I told you, you come from Africa, people look at you and they know you're strong, subhanAllah. They won't mess in a rush with someone from Africa. Right? Right? <laughs> they won't mess. Because Allah's given you something perhaps He didn't give others. Yes, it's there. They made him work hard and they looked at him as low. But Allah wanted to raise him. He was the only one. At that point, 
where he kept on saying Allah is one and they kept on harming him. He almost lost his life. Did he ever know that a day will come when the same people will hear him get up on top, right at the top, the Kaaba. He was allowed, he was allowed to go on the roof of the Kaaba and call out the Adhan of Salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. A few years later, did he know that? But he was being punished and penalized. He could have given up. He could have said, okay, khalas, I'm quiet. He didn't. He said, no, Allah is one. He could have kept quiet. It was not wrong to remain silent. He kept on saying, he is one. They hit him again, he is one. Hit him again, he is one. Almost died, he is one. Until the Prophet sallallahu some time later, came back from Mi'raj and says, Oh Bilal, I heard your footsteps in Jannah. I heard your footsteps in Jannah. My brothers and sisters, that was the sacrifice, the dedication, the love. He never gave up. They tried hard. He didn't give up. He kept on pleasing Allah. He developed that relationship with Allah. We cannot even get up for salah, let alone persecution. He was honored. Oh Bilal, oh Bilal, Allah's blessed you with a beautiful voice. Call the people for salah. He was known as Mu'addinu Rasulillah. The hadith says the most conspicuous people on the day of judgment will be the Mu'addin. Why? Everyone who comes for Salah after that, the Mu'addin gets a full reward of all those Salah. That's why the Prophet says, If people knew the value of calling out to prayer and being in the first Saf in Salah, they would have drawn lots to get that post if they had to. Meaning they would have fought over it. Why? When you say, and a thousand people come to the masjid, you have a reward of 1,000 salah. That was Bilal ibn Rabah. Do you think he got that chance for free? Allahu Akbar. There was sacrifice. At a time of a low, at a time of a low, his spirituality was still high. Subhanallah. With us, unfortunately, we become high. May Allah forgive us. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, these are a few words I thought I'd share with you. Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu never knew when he was being persecuted what Allah prepared for him 20 years down. 20 years down. Are you ready to wait a few years? With us, we want it today. Someone came to me once and said, Brother, you told us if we start Salah and we call out to Allah, He'll listen. It's been three whole days. <laughs> three whole days. Allah's not listening. Subhanallah. 30 years of your life, you were not anywhere. Three days, you're impatient with Allah. So Allah says, no, no, we know when the time is right, we'll give it to you. I tell you, you can be calling to Allah, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, bless me with a husband. Right? You have sisters making dua. Because husbands today, my beloved brothers, I'm just saying, treat your wives with respect. And my sisters to treat your family members with good respect. We need to treat each other with respect. We are struggling as an ummah because we, we are not faithful to each other. We are struggling as an ummah because we, are, we don't speak to each other well. But I promise you, if you do, and if you treat each other with respect, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you goodness in the long run. You'll see it. So I was saying, a person making dua, Oh Allah, grant me a good husband. And she is 19 years old. She's already concerned. When she becomes 29 and she's still making the same dua, can you imagine what she must be feeling? If those 10 years drew you closer to Allah, trust me, even if you're 32, 35, whatever age, one day, what does it cost Allah to answer your dua? Nothing. He can just flick, flick. Even I know someone who married at 39 and she said it was worth the wait. I have such a guy that I have no regret, subhanallah. Subhanallah, 39. May Allah bless our brothers and our sisters. Amen. If you're waiting, no problem. Yes. Because sometimes we end up marrying a person and we have no respect for each other. We are struggling and suffering because we've lost track. The Prophet ﷺ says, the best of you are the best to your wives, to your husbands, to your family members. We are the worst to our family members. I promise you. That's why we're struggling as an ummah. 
Become better to your family members. Go home and make that difference. Change your life tonight. Whatever bad is happening, chop it, cut it. You're not going to achieve anything by it besides your own destruction in the dunya and the akhirah. Cut it out. Go home and satisfy your people. Make them happy. Buy them something. One rose. You know what? A petal from a rose will make them happy. You haven't even decided to have half of it. There was a brother whose wife was so happy because he used to bring roses every so often. I told him, brother, I heard about it, man. Roses. He says, yeah, every time I go to the graveyard, I just see these roses on the graves. I pick up one. Whoa. <laughs> Even those roses are working. Subhanallah. <laughs> Allah forgive us. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, we must make this change, active change. I was telling you when you are softened, it's a sign of the mercy of Allah. Didn't I say that? Your true piety is depicted by the softening of your heart. People are harsh. When they are harsh, they are far from Allah. They are far from Allah. Open your heart. Be a, be a person who is good to others. Be hard on yourself. But don't be hard on others. Now let me read for you the verse and then we can close. Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ it is because of the mercy of Allah that you are so lenient towards those around you. O Messenger, peace be upon him. It is because of the mercy of Allah that you are lenient. Why are you lenient? Mercy of Allah. It's a sign of the mercy of Allah, the love of Allah, the connection with Allah. That's why you are kind. You know why? What makes me more important than you? You're on earth just like I'm on earth. You had parents just like I do. You were born on earth just like I was. You have the right to be on earth just like I do. I cannot claim a greater right than you to be on earth because we're all on this earth from Allah. He created me just like He created you. So if I understand my connection with Allah, I'm going to respect you because the same Allah who made me, made you. If I think I'm better than you, I've lost my connection with Allah. Do you get it? When you see a person as fair as ever, as dark as ever, whatever nationality, as short as ever, as tall as ever, that's all irrelevant. The test is yours. Do you recognize them through the maker who made both of you? That's what it is. And do you love them because they are your brother from one mother and one father? It's just that it's a few generations. Today you are here. How many children do you have? You will say two, five, six. If you're like me, you might say, mashallah, bigger number. Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. What happens? They have children. They will have children. Their children will have children. And those children will have children. And their children's children will have children who will have children. By that time, they won't even know that we're related. Do you know that? And then... They will become different tribes, different nationalities. Who knows, they might start, may Allah not let it happen, but they could start fighting. We've started doing that. But if you look at a few generations up, we are connected through one person. One. One person. Go back, think about that. That's the mercy of Allah, to be lenient, to be calm. Allah says, if you were harsh, hard-hearted, harsh, they would have all dispersed. You would have had no one, you're alone. But Allah says, no, this Prophet is on the highest level of character and conduct. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us goodness. My beloved brothers and sisters, before I leave, I want to set a record in Northampton, inshallah. No excitement. Can I walk out of here? I'll greet everyone just with a sign of a hand. Or this way here, inshallah. And let's not get excited. Each one of us, we can get closer to Allah on our own. I told you by shaking my hand, you're not going to get Jannah. It won't help you in your grave. But if you shook yourself through a good word, we might have said, and tomorrow morning you are there for Fajr, I think we've, we've succeeded a little bit, inshallah. Right? So if I can walk out calmly, I will be the happiest man. I will come back to Northampton by the will of Allah. It, 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 it's such a relief. It, I would love to have shaken everybody's hand just out of the love. But you know what? It's impossible. And at the same time, 
We don't want to stampede. This is a house of Allah. I was listening to people, you know, raising their voices, saying, keep quiet, sit down, come here, come there. It was paining me to say, we don't need this house of Allah. The calmness should be such that by the will of Allah, we don't, you know, we don't disturb anyone's concentration. So, inshallah, you'll allow that to happen by the will of Allah. Let's see. Let's see. Wow, I've read such, uh, such a riot act. I think people feel guilty to even make salam. May Allah bless you all. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك